Known by its map designation as Area 51. We're now learning Area 51. Known as Area 51. Thank you for clearing that up. Area 51. Thank you. Known as Area 51. Because Area 51 is very important. We called him Jimmy. And everybody wanted to be his friend. What's good? What's good? We're to Area 51 here with Jimmy James telling you the truth about boxing, what you got to know. And what you haven't heard, you're going to hear it here because here we're straightforward. And uh, just come to my channel, subscribe, and also give us a like. It's very simple, like, and share our content too if you like what we're saying here. Obviously, a lot of people are not going to like what we say here. But if you do like what we say here, please go ahead and share our content. So it's been a very interesting week. I've been attacked by many different fronts. A lot of people... Um, some people just don't tell my name. They don't want to give me advertisement, uh, even though they are. <laughs> but it's fun. Uh, it's really interesting how this works because, you know, I've never really been a fan of Errol Spence. And I liked her in Scroffer's style, but I couldn't say I'm a fan of him. But one thing I've seen within Terrence Scroffer's career is that in the end of the day, there is a reason why nobody wants to fight him. And the reason is because in the end of the day, nobody wants to lose badly against somebody with the fighting uh, style that he offers. Terrence Crawford is a very dangerous fighter. When the welterweight division saw what he did to Jeff Horn after Jeff Horn beat Manny Pacquiao in a way, perhaps, that, you know, was controversial, but still beat him. Everybody was quiet. And I started to realize, I said, damn, this is going to be a problem. Because what this means is that they're going to do exactly what they did to Gary Russell Jr. When he was requesting a lot of the fights and nobody like Leo Santa Cruz, uh, Lee Shelby and other fighters, they just didn't want to fight him. Oscar Beldez didn't want to fight him. So it put a strain on Gary Russell Jr. Lomachenko fought him, Jojo fought him, but there were many other fighters who didn't want to fight him. So I knew right away that this was going to be a problem. And generally speaking, as I've mentioned many times, black undefeated American fighters are the most avoided. There's no question about that. In my mind, there's no question. Even other black fighters avoid uh, African-American fighters. And I don't call them African because they're black, they're Americans. Keep saying that shit. You know, nobody calls it, you know, white people, European Americans. They just call them, you know, Americans. But when it comes down to Latinos, they're Mexican-American and you know, he's African-American, you know, but it's not like, oh, he's a, you know, white American. He's a European American. <laughs> All that racist eugenics bullshit. You know, I believe in God, so I don't believe in that garbage. But anyway, so I wrote a article today. And before I start, I have somebody sent me a link about a um, YouTube channel called the Thrill TV Boxing or some shit like that. And uh, I didn't know what I was going to look at and said, uh, Jimmy, they're talking about you here. They just don't want to mention your name. <laughs> I said, okay. So I checked it out. And um, I don't have a problem if you disagree with me. That's fine. I mean, a lot of people disagree with me and you should disagree with me if I'm saying something that's false. But if you're going to call me fucking names, okay, and not even mention my name on top of that, which is ridiculous because I am mentioning your TV show right now or your whatever your YouTube channel show is. And you're not saying or asking me to go to your channel and debate you. Then to me, that's a coward move. Because nothing that I said was not true. And I want to get that. I want to make sure you understand that whoever you are, uh, whoever is hosting, I've, Never seen this fucking channel in my life, but okay, now that I've seen it, perfect. Okay, and they had another two hosts over there. One was a fat lady, and the other one was a, a guy who was under like a, I don't know, he's just like, he was just speaking or something. And they were all, for some reason or another, against Steven Nelson, which they were even calling him names. So he's giving his opinion. He's actually being straightforward because, you know, obviously... Uh, the Errol Spence camp hasn't been too straightforward. And he is 
He is what? Steven Nelson is is what? And he has to come to your show? Fuck you think you are. Fuck out of here. Nobody watches that garbage. I don't even know what that fucking show was about till that guy sent me that link. Fuck you talking about. And everything that I heard in that show was fucking bullshit. All garbage. Just just emotional garbage. That's what I heard that in that show. And I and I, I'm a straightforward person. I'm a straightforward shooter. That was garbage. Everything that I heard in that show. Didn't make any sense whatsoever. I tried to contact Errol Spence's team. Haven't heard a word. I tried to email because we have a website, goldenerabboxing.com. We are registered as a journalism site. So we are legit. And they don't want to answer us. They have a PR team. They have a PR team for a reason. And the team is to actually answer your questions. But they don't answer. But when I talk to Terrence Crawford, that seems not to be a problem. His team is actually pretty open, forward-minded with me. And that's one of the reasons why I got the interview. Because they're transparent and the other side is not. So unless your fucking people are not transparent, how do you expect me to believe anything your dude is saying? That's just stupid. Doesn't make any sense. Maybe it does in, you know, some other state, but not in my state. Now, uh, before I continue with this, I want to make sure that people understand two things. And I think this is very important. This is very important. First of all, I'm a boxing fan beyond everything else. And I don't give a shit, to be honest with you, about no racial shit or white shit or Latino shit. I don't give a fuck about that. If you're going to go without politics, go and fuck yourself and, you know, fuck yourself good with it. Okay. But don't bring this garbage to me because I give my analysis based on what I think is the fighters who are avoiding certain fighters. Okay. If you ask me, has Basil Lomachenko avoided Devin Haney? The answer is 100% absolutely yes. Okay. If you ask me if Gervonta Davis avoided Devin Haney, that's 100% yes. If you ask me, Jamal Charlo is a duck, he's 100% a duck. If you ask me, Canelo Alvarez is a cheater, he's not just a cheater, but he's also garbage for the sport and he's rehydration, I mean, things that people just don't get away with, he gets away with. If you're telling me, oh, you must be a Gennady Gaddafi fan, no, fuck no, because Gennady Gaddafi is another coward who avoided Andre Ward and he's avoided unification fights with, you know, Dimitri Sandrat and Jermall Charlo too. I don't like Ray Vargas. He's not risking. I don't like many of these fucking fighters. They're not risking. I don't give a shit about that. I care about the sport. Okay? If you care something or the else, I'm not going to defend a fighter who's ducking somebody else. I'm not going to do that in my show just because he is a certain color. Okay? I'm not that desperate to feed a community of people to do that. And I see that shit with the black community. I see that with the Latino community. Oh, you gotta, you speak Spanish. You should be protecting Canelo Alvarez. What are you doing? Man? Shut the fuck up. Get out of my face. I don't run like that. I'm not gonna back up Basil Lomachenko because he's a white fighter. Fuck out of here. There's been no good, good white fighters lately. And Basil Lomachenko is, I mean, serious enough for him in the United States. Why would I back him up? Doesn't make sense. But you gotta be with Fury when he fights. I thought well, I, I bet it Wilder was gonna knock him out. He, and I got you can see in my predictions. I did him in Spanish, in fact. I was wrong. What can I say? Am I gonna be wrong again? Yeah, 100 percent So don't give me this garbage that you know. Uh, I got to do something because if not, I offend somebody. Oh, man, get up with that bullshit somewhere else, okay? If you guys want to wear LGBT hats, go ahead. But go your fucking lanes and just leave me the fuck alone, okay? Go whine somewhere else. Here, I'm talking boxing. So I'm going to let anybody know that. And I believe in undisputed champions. I believe in unification fights. Those are more important than mandatories. And if a fighter is not unifying, many Mexican fighters are not unifying titles, that's a bad sign. That's bad. That's a terrible sign. I don't like 
fighters who duck other fighters. I don't think it's fair. And I do back up fighters like Dimitri Sander because they've been avoided. Because many fighters don't want to lose against that particular style. No, well, he's, you know, he's really technical, this guy, you know? And he's black. Yeah. He's not, he doesn't make money. I know. See, I'm not stupid. I know what's going on. I know what's going on. And I don't support that. I don't. But even people are going by people's purses and money. Like, like they should care about that. Oh, he's not making enough money. He's not a big draw. A big draw? The fuck you talking about? You wear panties or something? Or what? Only prostitutes talk about money and financial shit. Oh, baby, can you buy my... Can you do my hair? You got money? Oh, I don't want to be with him because I want money. Fucking what? Men talking about money like that. You should be protecting the fighters who are being avoided. That's what you should be doing. If you're real. Boxing fans, of course. But we, that's not what we're seeing in boxing. We just see politics and politics. And I'm just fucking tired of that garbage. That's why I founded Golden Era. I'm just sick and tired of that garbage, man. So, I was being criticized yesterday by these three clowns or what the fuck these people are. I don't know. I've never heard of them before. But I will say this, and it's not just them. There are other people too. Um, I get a lot of hate from Latino fans for Canelo Alvarez and and I get hate from uh, Latino fans who like Gennady Golovkin and another, and now yeah, you and another garbage fighter who has basically not fought anybody. He could have fought everybody in 115 and hope he fights uh, Stephen Fulton, which I consider a real fighter like Jojo Diaz and other fighters who are risking their undefeated records against young talents. So I salute them. But um, give me one second here. Let me go here. So I have told a lot of you, especially the ones that speak Spanish, if you don't speak Spanish, that's why I'm doing an English broadcast here so you understand what's going on. But I have told many people in the past that I believe that Errol Spence was probably going up. And what's interesting is as I was doing research the other day, I realized that I wasn't apparently the only person that thought that. Eddie Hearn predicted the same thing. Eddie Hearns. And we know that Eddie Hearns, you know, for as much as bullshit he's had with the situation between Canelo and Demetrius Andrade and just that the zone matchroom situation which i think is just terrible terrible promotional company also we thanks to eddie hearns we never saw undisputed fight in my opinion which is anthony joshua's fault because i believe that the fighters in the end of the day they are responsible for their contract they are the ones who actually choose to be in the promotional company to start with so it's their responsibility no matter what but we never saw a fight for undisputed between terence crawford i mean uh, uh, between deontay wilder and anthony joshua and i think that's wrong uh, I think that was fucked up because Deontay Wilder could have been undisputed a long time ago. And he goes robbed from that opportunity. Just straight facts. Can't debate that. Okay. It seems like Anthony Joshua never wanted Deontay Wilder. So Eddie Hearns, this guy who betrayed Dimitri Sandra when he was having this um, um, conference after Canelo beat uh, Joe Blow or some English guy, you know, they're easy. And some English cookie, you know. Um, he basically betrayed him. But it's interesting because I'm going to make a point in this uh, broadcast that I'm doing here. It says, in December of, this is where I wrote, and it's for uh, Golden Era Boxing, uh, by me, Jimmy James. It says, in December of 2021, Matchroom promoter Eddie Hearns launched a warning it says, yeah, that has almost come true. I think you're going to see Errol Spence move up to 154 to avoid Terence Crawford. Avoid is maybe a harsh word, but strategically avoid. Yeah, interesting. So Eddie Hearn is saying that Errol Spence is going to duck Terence Crawford? And this is in January. Very strange. 
is what he says. I feel a bit sorry for Crawford. Not in the same ways, but in the ways that I think he wants to create that legacy opportunity. I'm not sure it will be there for him. It's very, very interesting he said that because he said exactly the same thing about Demetrius Andre in, in another um, um, article. So it's a very interesting thing what he's saying. He's saying, I, I feel bad for him because I don't think he's going to get any good fights. That's what he's saying. Suddenly, Spen makes Eddie Hearn's prediction come true as he says... I got to talk to my manager, Ayman. It's funny because technically, under U.S. law, under the Muhammad Ali Act, the manager and the promoter cannot be the same. But we, a lot of people are saying that the manager and the promoter uh, is Al Heyman, and uh, that's illegal. That's why Oscar De La Hoya and um, Bob Aaron try to sue him because they believe he's acting as both. He calls himself an advisor, but apparently, uh, he's also a manager and a promoter. So, I don't know. But it says here, I got to talk to my manager, Al Heyman, but I already told them that I've been at this way too long. I don't know. I might be moving up. So, you're moving up. Now, I'm going to go back to this point in a few minutes, if you shall let me. But I want to bring these... Uh, these characters they were talking in this uh, thrill boxing TV and I heard this uh, lady who was screaming at the TV she looked like an elephant having a stroke her voice was just too raised uh, I, I don't know fucking funny my windows didn't break but it says here she said that Terence Crawford had agreed with all the terms right and I agree with that and that's true but what did the article of ABC really said? In fact, I have it here. Let me pull it out for you. Let's pull it out. This is what the ABC article said. Give me one second. Let's get it here. Patience, patience. I had it here. Hold on one second. Oh, I got it here. So I'm going to read the article. And this was on September 15th. Just to make sure it's this one. Okay, this is what it says. And this was by uh, Mike Coppinger. So we'll get him in a second. Errol Spence Jr. and Terence Crawford had agreed to all material terms for the fight for the undisputed welterweight championship, an event targeted for November 19 in Las Vegas. Multiple sources tell ESPN. However, the deal has not been signed as the party's lawyers clean up legal language in the agreement per sources. So, yeah, they all agreed. However, the deal has not been signed as the party lawyers clean up legal language in the agreement per sources. So this person talking out her neck is telling me that she would accept a contract? She'll have a verbal agreement and accept a contract without having somebody revise it for you because these boxers don't know what the hell they're getting themselves into. And they can't check the language in the contract, which the lawyers have to check. Does that make any sense? Yeah, she didn't mention that in the podcast, did she? And they both thought the package includes a bilateral rematch clause that the loser will have to write to exercise. Sounds good. Per source, if the rematch clause is triggered, the winner will earn the majority of the revenue for the return bout per sources. Sounds good. So both of them, I want Terence Crawford. That's what Errol Spence said. That the fight, that's the fight that I want. That's what he wants. That's the fight everybody else wants. Terence, I'm coming for that belt. 
And then no now everybody this is what Crawford said now everybody's saying that Errol back and he's 100% ready. So now is the perfect time for me and him to fight. That's what Terrence Crawford said. He told ESPN in April. He called me out so I'm not backing up. Totally. So it says, I am free to do whatever I want, said Crawford, a three-division champion from Omaha, Nebraska. There's nothing standing in the way from us fighting. There's no promotional company that's blocking it. There's no wrong side of the street. There's no, nothing. Let's see who the best welterweight in the world is. So it all sounded like, great, we're going to see this fight. And once again, <laughs> the only thing that didn't happen the deal was not signed as the party's lawyers clean up the legal language and the agreement for sources. So they didn't know, at least the two fighters didn't know, what the contract offered. But verbally, they agreed. Yeah, let's do it. That's what the problem is. The key word, lawyers checking the contract. Now, with that said, of course, let's go back to my article. Do, 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 do. So, Mike Coppinger, who wrote this article in ABC News, a few weeks later in October, two weeks ago, he had a conversation with Max Kellerman. And this is what he said. And that was in Max Kellerman's program. It says the fight will be pushed to November or December. So remember, at first it was November 19th, but now it's going to be pushed to November or December. The issue, Max, is that there are disagreements of the contract over events, expenses, and basically transparency related with those expenses. So there's a transparency issue. Copper Coppinger then adds, Crawford agreed to take the short end of the split and works of no guarantee and wants transparency working out the net revenue. Yeah, it's important, their net revenue. And so far, they haven't been able to work it out. Why could you not give transparency on the net revenue? Have you done your taxes? You know the difference between net and gross? And it seems, this is what he says, as if all Heyman is holding up the fight. This is the same guy who wrote that same piece in ABC News that these people, these clowns and whatever... Uh, channel I, I saw were saying they agree this is the game this is the same guy writing it and then it says this he says this Crawford clearly wants to fight but he doesn't mention Errol Spence then the interesting part comes from Kellerman and this is where he responds and this is 100% accurate I, I, anybody that believes the opposite is full of shit okay they're, they're just making garbage up or they have some political agenda or something this is there is no such thing as the net. If you don't have oversight of the books, approving expenses, and knowing where all the money is going, no one would ever agree with a net since you work with the gross. Exactly. If you don't work with that, you don't know what the fuck is going on. They could be charging turns. Scrub. They could say, okay, you get 35% of the contract. Here, sign this. And by the way, you only get 17%. Why? Because of expenses that are not being covered because of the net. Doesn't make any sense, man. And this is what he says. That sounds Mike, he's talking to Mike Hoppinger, the guy who reported the original news in September, these people quoted. <laughs> that sounds like a duck, Mike. And Al Heyman doesn't think his guy is going to win. So that is a nuclear bomb. So what did I do? What did I do wrong? 
I tried to contact both teams, but only one replied. Interestingly, maybe Mike Coppinger had the same problem as well. And what happened was that when I contact Stephen Nelson, the director of the BMB Academy of Terrence Crawford's gym, he told me that the lawyers had spotted problems with the 35% contract. So they, he's confirming what the article originally said, that the lawyers were looking for details in the contract, the language. And that's the problem. Errol Spence team, whether he was all Heyman or not, it's his fault. He signed for all Heyman. But at the end of the day, he signs the contract. He knows what he's doing. Can't blame just all Heyman. And that doesn't make sense. I'm going to explain that in a second. That's what the contract ensured. A no guarantee. And the lawyers obviously are going to tell that to Crawford. Just like they would tell you if somebody is fucking you with a different pro a different contract. It's just common sense. But, you know, common sense is, you know, hard to find nowadays. So, now this is the problem for these Errol Spence fans. Let's not fight Terrence Crawford. Okay. Let's just go ahead and not fight him. But what's left in the welterweight division? And that would be Jaron Ennis, right? So that would be Jaron Ennis. Now the Terrence, uh, the, not the Terrence Crawford, but the Errol Spence fans are saying, well, why did he pick David Abenesian? Right? He could have fought Jaron Ennis. But let's see what Bosi Ennis, the father of Jaron Ennis, says. That's what he said. And, we've, and we'll get to the other point that I want to make. He said this. He said, let me see here. I have it right here. It says, Spence now has to show the boxing fans that he indeed is not ducking Crawford by fighting Jaron Ennis. As his father, Bo Sienna, spoke after sending the IBF petition. What's going to happen is they'll probably strip Spence with the IBF. So, Jaron Ennis, the father, Bo Sienna, is saying that he is going to vacate that belt, which is very similar to what Eddie Hearns is saying that he's going to move up and what I've been saying for a long time. He is saying that. I didn't make that up. That's him. So, go ahead and, you know, Bad talk him. But look at what he says here. And if it wasn't enough, Bozzi defended Crawford picking David Avenician, WBA row rank number six, is stating that the only difference with that is that Boots is the mandatory. Said Bozzi Ennis. The other guy isn't a mandatory. Terrence Crawford is not the mandatory. He's just number one. Just like with the IBF, Ortiz is number one with the WBO. Clarifying that Crawford wouldn't be ducking Ennis, but Spence would. But now that's the question. Would Errol Spence fight Ennis? Because let's forget about Terrence Crawford. Can't guarantee the contract. Your lawyers couldn't outsmart Terrence Crawford's lawyers. So, who are you going to fight that's going to even make that much money? Because, I mean, Jaron Ennis is not going to make as much money as fighting Terrence Crawford. I know a lot of people from around the world who know who Terrence Crawford is. You can go to different countries, they, but they don't know who Jaron Ennis is. And they might not know of him till two or three years. So if you fight Jaron Ennis, that purse or whatever it is that you're trying to sell is not going to work too well, financially speaking. But don't pick and Yanta Sestanionis, who is your double BA, I think he has an interim title. Don't pick him. Because if you pick him, financially, you're going to make less than with Jaron Ennis, and you're going to make even less than with Terrence Crawford. So that financially doesn't make sense. Huh. So what the fuck is going on? I mean, if you're going to duck Terrence Crawford, I mean, at least... A fight with Jaron Ennis would make money. 
or some money, a lot more, than Estaniones. So if you fight Estaniones, you have officially lied because you have said, if this happens, that you are going to leave. And now you want to fight Estaniones. And Terence Crawford has said that he wants to fight you in February. He just has to fight at Venetian right now. Incredible. Doesn't make any sense. In fact, Oscar De La Hoya had said that Terence Crawford is a great fighter, but he didn't think or believe that even Virgil Ortiz is ready for him. And, he, and Virgil Ortiz is not requesting that fight either at this point. Uh, uh, Steven Nelson told us that, and I believe him. So what the fuck is going on? So you move to 154. Let's say, go ahead, you do that. Who are you going to fight? Brian Castani? I mean, that would be a good fight. I should, I watch it. But that's a risky fight. You could lose that fight. And that's not going to be too much money on that fight. I don't even think he's ranked too high. But it's a decent name. He was almost going to be undisputed. You fight Sebastian Fundora? I don't think you're going to win that fight. To be honest with you, I think Fundora is dangerous. Very dangerous fighter. I don't think you're going to beat him. Will you really fight Jermel Charlo for undisputed? He's your he's a really good friend. He's a really good friend. I don't know. I don't know that friends fight each other in the sport of boxing. I don't know. Maybe they do. I don't know. I hope they do. If he does go up, if it's Jermel Charlo, okay. That that's a good fight. But something tells me he's not going to fight him. The other option is the other guy who's dangerous in the division, that's Israel Madrinov which is another dangerous fighter too. And me personally, I am not sure that you want to fight that guy. I'm not saying that you couldn't beat him, but I personally think he's dangerous. I don't know that you can beat that guy. I don't know. He's, he's a dangerous fighter, but maybe you can. But that's a dangerous fight, and it's not going to make you that much money. Brasad Mutasaliev is another fighter that's there, but that's not going to make you money. It's a little bit risky. I don't think he's as risky as Madrinov or... What's his name? Um, Fundora. Or you can take the winner of Siu. Or Sue. Whatever they fucking call him. Sounds like soup. And Charlo. But you will be waiting a little bit for that. And you are not fighting anybody right now. You're going to fight Tony Harrison. Maybe Tony Harrison. A good fight. I mean, okay. I think Tony Harrison is in... He's leaving. I mean, he's not he's not in his best time right now. I mean, he's, you know, past his prime, but okay. So who the fuck are you going to fight if you're talking about financial expenses that is going to make that much money in that division? And then the question arises. Terrence Crawford from one, or can be argued with not much debate, and if there's a little bit debate, you can say Jermel Charlo, but a lot of people don't know who Jermel Charlo is. Most people know who Terrence Crawford is worldwide. Even in Mexico, everybody knows who Terrence Crawford and Jermel, they do know, but not as much. That who is there in that division that you're going to make more money? And this is what the problem is. PBC has lost a lot of money over the years, there was an article by Yahoo Sports, uh, I think it was in 221, where they were saying that, well, it was in 221, I forgot, but it was by a Lalo or something like Kevin, I forgot what his name was, but he was basically saying that they lost a lot of money. So they need good fights. Okay. But I don't think it's all Heyman's fault. I'm going to tell you why. Because the promoters, they live out of these fights. I don't think personally that it was uh, um, Eddie Hearn's. Uh, I don't think it was Eddie Hearn who was responsible for not making Anthony Joshua against Deontay Wilder. I think Anthony Joshua just didn't want the fight. Because in the end of the day, the 
I mean, maybe in England it's different, but United States, you got to sign the contract. You're the last person as a fighter to sign the contract. They choose your opponents, but you have to decide whether you want to fight them or not. That's by law. You can't force any fighter to not take a fight. You can call PBC, you can call top rank, call whoever you want. The fighter in the end has the last pen. Stroke of the pen. Pam, yep, I want it. You make it happen. Timothy Bradley said it. Even Ryan Garcia was man enough to say that Oscar De La Hoya works for me. I don't work for him. But a lot of people are still brainwashed by the promotion. Like they have to, the promotions want to make the best fights happen. So Al Heyman will be retarded, I mean, to say the least, if he didn't want to make that fight with Terrence Crawford. Because there's nothing at 154, nothing at 147 they can't compare with that. But it's interesting how Errol Spence had said uh, a few months ago, actually a year ago, that he wanted to move up and fight against Canelo Alvarez. Ah. Fight against Canelo Alvarez. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, let me see if I find this article here. Let's see if I find it here. It was uh, published some time ago, but um, let me see. I'm going to find it for you right here. And actually, I didn't know this. I thought the negotiations were, um, were just for, let me see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show you right now. Give me one second. So people don't uh, say I'm lying or I'm making up opinions like other people on other shows. Let me uh, put this here for you. It's like I saw it here. Give me one second. All right, so this was in Spanish, but it says here, that Canelo Alvarez had an offer from PBC. Let me see if I find it here. To fight Charlo or Spence. So Spence will be 55 million. So yeah, so. So according to this promoter, this guy is named Brown. What the fuck is his real name? Let me see if I find it here. Who is this guy's name? Let me get it here so people don't question my ass. Hell no. Okay. Tom Brown, that was his name. So Tom Brown said they offered Charlon Spence forty five million of dollars. So Okay, so let me see. So $45 million to fight Charlo, that was for Canelo, and $55 million to fight either Errol Spence or David Benavides. <laughs> Pretty sure he didn't want David Benavides in the contract, Canelo. He was going to get his ass whipped. Uh, but that's what they offer Errol Spence or David Benavides. So Errol Spence was really thinking, because he had to agree with that contract, to go up. And Errol Spence had said that he wanted to fight him. So now that makes sense because now we can see why Eddie Hearn said he was going to not fight Terrence Crawford and move up to fight in a different division. And he didn't clarify that he was going to 154. Eddie Hearn, he just said he was going to move up. But if he's fighting Canelo, Canelo, <laughs> now it's starting to make sense. Because, yes, even if Errol Spence were to go up to 160, there's no good money there. He fights Gennady Golovkin. That's a garbage fight because that guy can't even fight for a dime right now. Gennady Golovkin is garbage. He's always been garbage. Never undisputed. I mean, ducking unification fights. I mean, I mean, anyway, I can go on. I'll do a different video about him. He's not going to fight Jamal Charlo. They're friends. I highly doubt it. He's not going to fight Janabek. I mean, the guy is no name and it will be a risky fight. I think he, 
I mean, I don't know. That's a different weight class. I don't know actually if he beats him or not. He's not going to fight, um, what's his name? The Dominican guy. And what's his name? Uh, Carlos Adames. He's not going to fight him. There's no money to make with any of those fights. Unless he were to fight Jermall Charlo, but highly, highly doubtful that he will fight any of the two Charlo. We'll see. Could be wrong, but I highly doubt it. So what's next? He Let's say he does. And by the way, and here it says that they were going to fight at 164. That was the agreement. 45 for Charlo. But 55 for you know, Spence. That's a lot of money. 55 million. And then the question once again comes along. Why? Because Canelo Alvarez is really a money maker. He's making the big money. And I'm pretty sure Canelo fucked up huge. And I'm going to tell you why it won't make sense for Canelo to take Errol <laughs> Spence. <laughs> because they're both poodles. They both duck. So Canelo knows right now that Dave Morrell Jr. is in his ass. He knows that Dave Benavides wants that fight. I mean, there's not much he can go. He's not going to fight him. It's on a risky fight. And he does have Jamal Charlo. He's probably not going to fight Caleb Plant unless there's a British guy there or somebody. He'll probably fight him. You know, Zach Parker or something. You know, he likes the British pate. You know, like the American one, though. So, I doubt that he's going to take any of those fights. Highly doubt. Very risky for Canelo. And then at the same time, he can move up to 175 again. And he's not going to fight, apparently, the winner between Ramirez and Bebo because they don't want to fight no Mexican fighters. Which, by the way, uh, David Benavides is half Equatorian, half Mexican, so it's not going to work too well. I mean, he's really American, but, you know, you want to go by that book, garbage of race or whatever. Okay. That's a problem. Because 175, he's not going to fight Hunter Berbiev. He'll beat Hunter Berbiev. will crush him. And Dimitri Bebo said he doesn't have any real reasons to fight Canelo again. So Canelo will lose against one of those fighters if he challenges any of those fighters. He's going to lose. He will lose. But none of those fights, I think the day of Benavides fight does, but none of those fights would generate too much money. And in fact, the guy said it, $45 million for Jamal Charlo, but $55 million for Errol Spence. What happened? What happening, man? And what happens is that in the end of the day, Canelo's easy way out from all the shit that's around his division or he can lose is Errol Spence. He likes that. He likes to put rehydration clauses. That's what he does. That's who Canelo is. He's a, you know, fake champ. And Errol Spence doesn't want Crawford. So if he lost against Crawford, his value in the market will crash. And so if he fought Jaron Ennis. So no, let's not. Let's go ahead and do Avoid it. And everybody agrees. Bozy Ennis agrees. Crawford tells him he's ducking. They don't even get a transparent contract. But if he goes and fights Canelo Alvarez, he believes, at least probably Al Heyman and PBC believe, that he will make the big bucks. And that's the reason behind this. I believe that they are trying to pursue Canelo Alvarez. And I think that's where it's going. Because otherwise, financially, it makes absolutely no sense. Only a retard could say the the, the opposite, okay? Come on, team. Come on, team. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, man? So that's why I think it's going to happen. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe he does fight one of these fighters. But Errol Spence was really, really adamant in actually calling Canelo Alvarez. And he never called... Terrence Crawford. There was no 55 million contract for Terrence Crawford. 
all they saying is not going to generate venue, which is bullshit because everybody will watch that fight. We will watch that fight more than we'll watch Mikey Garcia. We will watch any other fight that we've seen fight Terrence uh, Errol Spence, which, you know, outside of Sean Porter, I mean, I can, uh, I'll talk about his resume and another. I don't think he's fought too many good opponents, to be honest with you. But that's okay. That's, you know, that's here, there, he, neither here or there. But he's not going to generate in any of those fights more money than fighting Terrence Crawford. So in the end of the day, the only alternative to that has to be Canelo Alvarez. And I believe that's where it's headed. I think Canelo Alvarez is a good paper, is a good, you know, ticket meal for him. And that's what he's going to take. I believe uh, that's the fight that could happen. And 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 and, and, and like I said, uh, in today's boxing, they rather jump divisions. This is what happens all the time. Like Naoya Yune, he would rather jump his division in weight class to avoid everybody at 115 than to actually fight fighters. Oscar Valdez would rather jump his division, but finally he, he grew manhood and he fought, you know, um, our friend Shakur Stevenson and he was, he was going to get beat by Shakur either way. It was just a question of time. But fighters jump divisions to avoid fighters unless they're being avoided like Dimitris Andre, who has been avoided many times. And I can debate anybody about Janabek. I know the whole story. I contacted his team. And I know Janabek's story too. So I can debate that as well. So for all the haters who are talking garbage of what I'm saying, the first thing you can do is grab your head and insert your head in a trash can because that's what you're worth. I'm giving you information and I'm speaking what is written here, the same way that you are quoting, if you're quoting something legit, from somebody else's source. So don't talk shit about my channel if you can't protect your own garbage, okay? So that's how I'm going to leave it. So subscribe to my channel, Golden Era. We speak facts, we speak truth, we speak English or um, Spanish. Subscribe to my channel. And also subscribe to our webpage, goldenerabboxing.com. We have the very good content, historical content too. It's for all real boxing fans. And we shall see you later. Like the natives say it in Arizona, Hagone, also northern New Mexico. Peace out. And I'll see you in the next one.